Hey, what's up guys? Today I'll show you an American horror film, The Silence. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins in an underground cave, with a man and a woman discovering a deep underground cave system. The two people then relay the newly found system to the surface team. Then, they hear a faint screech, and suddenly, they get attacked by a swarm of bat-like creatures, leaving only their death. Unfortunately, it's too late for the surface team to pull them up, and the two people get killed by the creatures. The following day, the director introduces us to a poor girl named Ally. She is deaf, and a group of boys make fun of her for being deaf. In the next scene, we see her muscular father, who gets his dying hair attached to his face, and thus prefers to be called Mr. Bald, working as an initial ground inspector at a construction site. After leaving his work, Mr. Bald's wife calls him and tells him to pick up her mother's medical prescription on the way home. Then she tells him about a parent who had called and told her about the group of boys who had mocked their deaf daughter earlier. Ally walks her way home, and on the way, her soon-to-be boning boyfriend sneaks up behind her and surprises her out of her smelly dumplings. Then he walks her to her home. After going home, Ally's mom asks her why she was late, and Ally tells her that she came home walking. Later that night, Ally's lying on the bed, when her dad comes to her and asks about her boyfriend. This kinda embarrasses Ally, so she asks him to stop. Then Mr. Bald tells her that he and the mother just worry about her and leaves the room, saying that he loves her. A few moments later, Ally wakes up to her mother, telling her that something's wrong and that she needs to wake up. Her mother takes Ally downstairs, where all her family members are seated on the couch and watching the news. Soon her uncle comes to their house, and they all find out about the creatures on the news channel. Then the reporter says that cities are the worst affected, and shows a small video clip of a woman sitting inside a car, with her son's mouth taped shut. The reporter tells everyone to stay indoors, and keep the door shut, while being completely silent. Then the family decides to leave the city, and head to a safe area. In the next scene, we can see people sitting in an underground metro, when suddenly a passenger's baby starts crying. Since they have to be silent to stay alive, a cruel co-passenger takes away the baby. The mother tries to take back the baby, but other passengers also stop her. Then she says that she too will leave the train. Hearing this, the cruel guy gives back her baby, and the woman gets out of the train. As she walks away from the train, her baby starts crying again, and the noise attracts the creatures. The mother tries to run back to the train, but unfortunately, she gets killed by the creatures in an instant. In the following scene, Ally talks to her boyfriend over a video call and tells him that they are heading north and even asks him to join her. But he declines her offer, saying that he will stay with his parents. Grieving from the fact that she won't get a chance to enjoy any tongue massage during the apocalypse, Ally starts crying. Seeing Ally cry in the video call, the boyfriend promises her that he will stay in contact with her and tells her not to worry before ending the call. Then the family stops at a gas station, refills their gas, and gets some food. Ally takes the dog to pee, and suddenly, a bald man with his angry hair attached to the face, who thus prefers to be called Angry Mustache, aims a shotgun towards Ally and the dog, scaring the pee back to the dog suddenly. Then Mr. Bald and his wife walk toward the Angry Mustache, while asking him what he needs. The Angry Mustache threatens that he needs the keys to their car, or else he will shoot Ally. Fortunately, the uncle shows up in time and shoots the angry mustache, wounding him in the leg, but unfortunately misses his balls. Using this opportunity, everybody leaves the gas station in their car and continues their journey. The next day, Ally reads more news online about the creatures and finds out these are ancient animals and mysteriously have evolved into these bloodthirsty creatures. Sometime later, they get stopped due to road traffic, so they decide to take a shortcut by going into the forest. Uncle leads the way to the forest, with the rest of the family following him in another car behind. Suddenly a herd of deer runs across the uncle's car, and he turns the handle towards a ravine. Unfortunately, his car rolls down the ravine and lands upside down. Seeing this, Mr. Bald and his wife rushed to save him from the crash. Mr. Bald tries to free him from the car, but he is not able to save him. Uncle realizes that he will die from the blood loss, so he tells the rest of the family to continue the journey without him. Mr. Bald doesn't want to leave him alone, and tries his best to pry him out. After seeing Mr. Bald fail, Uncle threatens him to leave him, or else he would shoot him dead. Initially Mr. Bald hesitates, but later agrees to leave the place. Mr. Bald and the rest of the family get back in the car, and Ally notices the dog barking at something. Immediately she tells the rest of the family to keep quiet, and to turn off the car. Everything seems to be quiet for some time, 
But suddenly, a creature flies onto the window, scaring the smelly dumplings out of everyone. Soon many creatures swarm the car, and the wife starts freaking the hell out. Uncle hears her screams and acts fast by attracting the creatures towards him after shooting some rounds from the gun. Hearing the gunshots, all the creatures swarming the car fly towards Uncle. Uncle shoots some of the creatures, but Simni gets eaten alive. All the family members hear Uncle's screams, except for the deaf ally. Mr. Bald gets tired of the dogs barking and lets him out. Since the creatures stay near the car, Mr. Bald decides not to drive or get out of the vehicle. After staying for a while, Mr. Bald gets bored and gets out of the car. Right when he gets out, a creature lands on top of the car and starts banging the car. Mr. Bald sees a metal bar lying a couple of feet away from him and walks slowly towards it. Fortunately, he picks it up and throws it, making noise to lure the creature away from the car. The creature flies towards the bar and examines it for a long time with its low IQ brain before realizing it's just a little trick. Then it hears others from its hood and flies to them, realizing that maybe it's an emergent hormone let go call from its kind. Using this opportunity, Mr. Bald runs back to his family and gets a cigarette lighter from the granny. Then he goes back to uncle's car and sets it on fire. The fire and the sound coming from it attract the creatures towards it. Then Mr. Bald leads the family away from the place and they all move in complete silence. After walking for some time, the granny gets tired and everyone takes a small break. The next moment, Mr. Bald spots a house in the distance, so they all walk toward it. Finally, they reach the house and find it all fenced up. They try to enter the house, but they make a noise and attract a creature nearby. Hearing the creature screech, the old landowner comes out with a gun and starts yelling. This further attracts even more creatures, and eventually, she gets killed in the dumbest way possible. Later, Mr. Bald spots a sewer leading right into the house and goes inside. On the way, he unknowingly smashes a rattlesnake pit and makes the snake come out. Mr. Bald goes inside, checks out the house, and finds it suitable. So he heads out and signals them to come in. Ally's younger brother is the first one to crawl into the sewer, and half the way, he comes in contact with the rattlesnake. He stops moving, and the snake starts hissing and rattling its tail like making an emergent phone call to its fellows. However, hearing the hissing and rattling, a creature walks into the sewer and bites the head of the snake in an instant. Unfortunately, the wife gets a bit clumsy on the way inside and makes a noise. This attracts two more creatures, and they start biting her leg. To save his family, Mr. Bald switches on the weed chopper, and the noise from it makes all the creatures fly into the machine, getting themselves killed. They rush the wife into the house, and Granny quickly cuts open the wife's dress and reveals the wound. Everyone gets shocked after finding a large claw wound. They finally manage to treat the wound, and the wife goes to sleep. Later that night, Ally calls her boyfriend, and he picks up the call. To Ally's shock, the boyfriend tells her that both his parents have been killed by the creatures. Their call gets cut off in between, and this leaves Ally worried. The following morning, Granny removes the gauze from the wife's leg, showing that it has gotten even worse. So the Granny informs Mr. Bald of the situation and tells him that they need antibiotics to prevent the infection from spreading. To save his wife, Mr. Bald decides to go to search a drugstore nearby with his daughter. While entering the nearby town, they see two dead bodies and find their throats slit. A few moments later, they enter a town, and unknowing to the two of them, a reverend watches them. Sometime later, they manage to find a drug store, but see the entrance locked. Since it's locked from the inside, the duo decides to enter through the back door. While Mr. Bald searches for antibiotics, Ally finds something moving inside a man's corpse. She slowly opens it, and to her shock, she finds a couple of eggs laid by the creatures. Suddenly, some nasty liquid squirts on her face, and she makes some noise. This attracts a couple of creatures into the store. Being unable to move, Ally forms a plan and manages to use the fire extinguishers to escape the place safely. While going back to give the antibiotics to the wife, they come across the reverend and find him to be tongueless. The creepy man in black tries to recruit both of them to some kind of cult. But Mr. Bald and his daughter leave fast, ignoring the creepy guy. Soon they return home and reunite with the family. Fortunately, the wife gets well after getting treated with antibiotics. Ally finds out that the creatures cannot survive the extreme cold and makes the family plan to move north for their safety. A few moments later, the creepy reverend finds out the place where Mr. Bald's family is staying, so he comes there with some of his followers. The creepy guy tries to recruit the family again, but Mr. Bald refuses his offer again. 
But when the creepy guy asks for his daughter, Mr. Bald loses his temper and brings out the gun. This forces the call to leave the place for now. Later that night, Ally gets a message from her boyfriend, and he lets her know that he's going north to a safe place called the refuge. Later that night, Mr. Bald and his wife find a young girl standing outside the house. They try to talk to the young girl, but find out she's also a member of the weird cult. Then they find many phones strapped on the young girl, and suddenly all the phones start ringing, and the noise starts attracting the creatures. The family tries to take cover from the creatures, but in the process, Ally gets kidnapped by other members of the cult. Granny runs behind them to save her granddaughter, and starts screaming while holding the kidnappers. The creatures kill off noisy Granny and the kidnappers, giving Ally a chance to escape. But the creepy Reverend catches up along with a few other cult members and kidnaps Ally once again. But this time, Mr. Bald and his wife burst into anger and go on a fast and furious rampage, killing a few of the members, including the creepy Reverend. A few weeks later, the family travels across America and finally reaches the refuge that Ally's boyfriend talked about. Finally, Ally gets to meet up with her boyfriend, and together they hunt down the creatures using bows and arrows, but without any time to restore their hormonity in the open wild. The movie ends with Ally wondering if the creatures would adapt to the cold and if the human species could adapt to a soundless life. This is Daniel's CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.